This is me, in a cave, working away on my Notion second brain template, never leaving, completely isolated, working on this template, then I might hit the pub, but then I'm back, in the cave, alone, never to see another human again, and then I go to work. I haven't gotten enough sales yet, hint hint, so I still have a job. But then I'm back in my cave, working on my second brain, building it, perfecting it. And now, I am Notion Setups. In this video, I'm going to show you five techniques that I've used to create a fantastic framework for my second brain in Notion and how you can implement it. Because a poorly built setup will leave you disorganized, unproductive, and unmotivated, which doesn't sound very fun. And the, and the whole point of headquarters is organized, productive, and motivated. Speaking of, if you can't bother spending hours creating your second brain, this one is linked in the description. It's pretty cool. Check it out. So for tip number one, I will show you how this is implemented and then walk you through how to build it. Basically, this here, this database, my day to day, this database, weeks, tasks, and this database, my month, and this database, my task list, it's all the same database. So I'm using the same database, but seeing it in many different views. The reason this is important is that you're not spreading your information across a billion different databases. It's going to be too much to handle, too much to organize, and it will become a clutter. So I'll show you how to create this. First thing we need to do is create a database. So I'll do forward slash DA and then click on table view. Click on that. We'll create a new database and I will call this tasks. Now let's add some items in here. Cool. Gary. Email. Jim. Fire. Bob. I'm not happy, Bob. Now let's say I want to see this task list as a calendar view as well. So to do that, I'll do forward slash database. Click on table view. Now we don't want to click on new database. We actually want to select this database. So you can search here, but it's coming up here in my recents. So we can see the name, tasks, and we can see in the page that it belongs in. So this page is called subscribe. Now, as you can see, this arrow is just representing that it's showing this database. So it's not its own new database. It's just showing another one. So that's a simple little thing. If you want to remove the name here, just click on these three dots, click on layout, show database title, turn that off. Now let's say we want to see this as the calendar. We'll click on the three dots, we'll click on layout, and we'll change this from table to calendar. Now, as you can see, it looks a bit squished. I'll just click on these three dots, make it full width. So as you can see, this date column got added here. Basically, Notion knows that you want to see this on a calendar in some instances. So to do that, you will require a date. Hence, none of these tasks are showing up. They don't have a date assigned to it. However, let's say Cool Gary gets assigned to today, now you can see that it pops up. So as you can see, there's a lot of potential here for streamlining your tasks and making you work faster by using the same database. As you can see in my headquarters template, I do this a lot. We're seeing the tasks here today. We're seeing tomorrow's tasks here. We're seeing the weeks. We're seeing the month. And we're seeing the tasks down here. We can see it if it has a no date, if it's a low priority, if it's personal, easy, a flow task, or a quick task. So it's a really intuitive system. We're seeing the same stuff just in a bunch of different views. It just makes working much, much more efficient. Okay, tip number two. You know when you're like going about your day and you come up with this idea and you're like, oh my God, I should definitely start this business idea. They'll be bankrupt by the end of this sentence. Or, oh, I really want to read this book. Or I should do some research about ants. I don't know anything about them and I want to learn more. Ants. So most likely you're working in one of three ways. Right now you're either writing down in like a notepad, learn about ants or read Atomic Habits, and you're just taking a quick note like that, and it's becoming a jumbled mess, or you're just forgetting it, so someone gives you a, a book recommendation like Atomic Habits, and you forget about it, or you forget, oh yeah, I wanted to read about ants, and that completely just gets forgotten, or you have a system for taking notes, but it's not actually organizing it in the places that you want to find it. So this is the next tip, creating a quick capture idea system that sorts them into the right places. So here I've created a take a quick note and add a resource in my template. So if you click on take a quick note, when we write learn about ants. ants. So here I can then add it into a life bucket. So a life bucket is just kind of an area of your life. For example, fitness, study, family, career, blah, blah, blah. Obviously you can create more or you can add it to a project. So let's say you have a project idea. We'll call it ants research. Then I can click here on new ants research. So this note that I'm now taking learn about ants will actually appear on this page. And I want to find it in one other place. I want to find it in a topic of interest. So this belongs in an interest of insects, I guess. So now it will appear in all the relevant pages that I wanted to find it in. So if I go to my uh, my project of ants research, scroll down here in ants research, we can see a note learn about ants. So when I'm capturing ideas, it's appearing in the right place for me to find it when I need it. And then when I'm done interacting with this note, I can archive it as well. Just click tick. And now, as you can see, it's gone. 
but I can always find it in the archive, so it sits here. Very intuitive, works very well. It's a similar idea with resources. If you want to learn about that, see the full Notion tool video, but I'll show you how you can create this. So I'll go back and create it in here. So first thing we're going to need is a new database, table view, and we will call this ideas. Click on create new database. Now what we want to do is create a button that is at the top of my page, or for example, I also have it on my mobile HQ. So if you're using this template, for example, you're seeing your day on this mobile HQ, you can easily take a quick note and you know it will appear in the right place. So I'll show you how to create this button. We'll do forward slash button, click on new button. Now in here, what we want to happen is when we click on this button, we add a page to, and then we want to select the database. So this is going to be ideas. Now what's gonna happen is when I click on this button, it's going to create a new page. So what I wanna do is add another step and then we want to open up this page and then we want to select new page added. That way it knows to open up the new page that I've just created. So I'll call this new idea, click on done. So now when I click on new idea, as you can see, it opens up this page. Ants are cool, I'll click away. And as you can see, it appears here in the database. So it's a really quick way of adding notes, resources and tasks. And that's really how I've built it into headquarters. You can add tasks here, you can add notes and you can add resources. Super efficient, works really well, everything kind of works together. My next tip is to infuse important productivity techniques into your template. So whatever your second brain system is, you want to make sure that you're actually using proper productivity techniques. There's obviously a ton out there, and my favorite have actually all been compiled into this free email course. Five of my favorite productivity systems, and then an email number six is just a little ad to buy my headquarters template. But the first five emails, really awesome, kind of just going through how to implement these productivity techniques. This email course is completely free. I, I recommend it, but I'm biased in that way. And uh, yeah, hope that it can help. Link in the description. Now, one of the techniques that I talk about in this email course is the Eisenhower method. Now, I'm very passionate about this. It's even built into the headquarters template. Basically, if I say task one, task two, task three, task four, and task five, what I can do here is change the importancy and urgency. So I'll make this one important and urgent. Then I'll make this one not important and not urgent. Then I'll make this one important and I'll make it urgent and you'll see how it's going to jump the queue. So task three now jumped up because what I've done here in this template is actually, I'll just show you the filter. It's actually sorting it by urgency and importance, just like the Eisenhower matrix. So I've taken this productivity technique that works super, super well, and it's actually built into this template. So that actually means we're letting this tool sort out our tasks for us. So it's organizing my tasks for me. So under the order tab here, it's putting things in order of urgency and importance. It's super helpful because you know you're actually working on stuff that matters and not just random tasks. Now the next tip is something that I don't see a lot of people talking about. So I'll just create a few tasks here. So here on this day, I can see I have three tasks, but how am I meant to know how cognitively demanding these are? That's really the big issue. People are scheduling out their months, either using a physical calendar or using digital calendars like this one or Google Calendar, or even if you're currently using Notion, you don't actually know how difficult are these tasks to do and how much focus do I need to actually do this task. So what I've done in this headquarters template is added a state. So the state is the state of mind that you need in order to do this task. So this one, let's say is a flow task. Let's say task two is also a flow state. And let's say task three is a flow state. Now having three really cognitively demanding tasks in one day, that's probably going to be too much. It's going to be super overwhelming. So it might be unrealistic. So what do we do? Well, basically now we can see that, okay, I have too much going on for this day. And then you can drag these tasks to separate days to ensure that you're actually getting a good balance. So next time you see something on your task list, either down here or someone's calling you saying, hey, can you do this on Tuesday? You can actually then quickly see, do I have too much stuff on that day? Not just in the sense of a long list of stuff to do, but are there too many items that day that involve too much flow state focus? Because you will not be able to do too many tasks that involve a lot of cognitive work. You might be able to pull it off for a day or two here, but doing this for a long time under many days or many weeks is just unrealistic. And that's really why I added this property here. So I'll show you how to do that in here. We'll go back here and here we can see cool Gary. So what I'm going to do is actually create another property and let's add a property and let's do it as a select. Now state of mind and let's create a few, let's say flow state and easy. Now what I'll do is I'll click on these three dots here. I'll click on properties and then here we can see state of mind. We wanna click on this eyeball. That means we can actually see this property here. So let's add some more tasks. I can add these if I want to into this very easily. There's two ways of doing that. I can either click here on this and then select the date 
and as you can see it appeared here, or I can actually drag it in here. And as you can see it remains up here, but it also gets added into this section. It's just another way of assigning it a date. So let's change email gym to a flow state and fire Bob. That's definitely going to be flow state. I'm very sorry, Bob. You're fired! Now here we can see this date is quite balanced. On a Saturday, we're firing Bob and we're emailing Jim and we're calling Gary. There's not too much stuff going on. But if we were to add some more stuff, build a house, flow state, learn to fly, flow state. There is too much stuff going on on this day. So we'll probably have to spread it out. So then I'll drag learn to fly. I might have to do that on Sunday and build a house that might have to be a Monday task. This is a really great way of managing task load and ensuring you're not going to burn yourself out by doing too much on a specific day or on a specific week. Now the last tip will be a quick one, but it's a fault that I see a lot of people that are in the productivity niche and uh, a lot of people that are passionate about learning about productivity they often make this mistake. As we've been taught, tasks should have a date assigned to them. They're not going to get done if they're not in your calendar. This is true and it helps with getting things done. However, you still need a place to capture tasks that don't have a date. So what I've done in here is added a tab called no date and I'll show you how to create this. This is so important because often we think of all these ideas and all these tasks that we wanna do and then we struggle to actually find time to do it. Well, we might just not have time in the calendar right now to do it but we still wanna ensure that when we think of this task, we have it in our task list. So we'll go to this task list here, call Gary, email Jim, blah, blah, blah. We'll click on filter and click on add advanced filter. What we wanna change is when the date and change is relative to today to is not empty. So then we'll change this tab view here to tasks with dates. And now we wanna see another column with tasks that don't have a date. So let's say build a house doesn't have a date assigned to it. So I'll just clear this. As you can see, it got removed from this list. So I wanna have another tab where I can see all the tasks that don't have a date assigned to them. Now there's two ways of doing this. We can either click on the plus button, but then we have to click on some settings and it's a bit more work. So I'll show you the easier way to do this. I'll just delete this and now right click on tasks with date, duplicate. We're going to call this no dates. And now all we're going to do is change the filter from where date is not empty to where date is empty. And as you can see here, we have build a house. So this is a quick way of capturing tasks into a database and not having to assign a time and date to them. If you found this video useful, I recommend checking out the headquarters template. In the video, I go into full depth of how this template works, what makes it different and how to actually operate it. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you learned something about Notion.